Hello again everybody and welcome back to Vujit's Blitz with me, Vujit. Hello. So we've looked at the best tech tree tanks in tier 6 and tier 7. We're now on to tier 8 and no, this is not a tech tree tank and funnily enough it's not listed as one of the best. So without further ado we're going to start as we always do, light tanks all the way up to TDs. We're only looking at the best in the tech tree. So we're going to start with the light tanks and this one was a little bit of a surprise to me if I'm being honest. I mean wow it's a mixed bag. I was kind of surprised and kind of not surprised at the same time. Yep you've got it the best tank in tier 8 in the lights in the tech tree is the American T49 the derp machine. So let's get into a replay and see what this one is all about. The T49 took me by surprise. And the reason it took me by surprise is because I thought the FV301 would be up there. In fact, I've got a video coming out on that shortly. But it doesn't take me by surprise because this is by far the most popular light tank in tier 8 of all the light tanks in tier 8. This has over 1,500 battles. Now contrast that with the FV301 with a mere 246. This is a very popular tank, and we know it's popular because it has a big derpy gun. This one has a win rate of just over 50% at 50.0, at 50.40, whereas the others are all struggling with 49 and 48% respectively. That includes the T54 lightweight, the FV301, both on 49%, the AMX 1390, and the RU251, both on 48%. This one has a damage per battle of a whopping 1,115, primarily due to that derp. But it is not, in fact, the best tank you can get. Not really. It's the derp that makes it. The DPM on this is 2,216. That is substantially lower than the FE301 at 2,707 and the RU at 2,763. Admittedly, it's better than the T-54 lightweight, just about. In fact, it's exactly the same online. Penetration isn't the best, it's 152. And this is with the derp gun, remember. Whereas the others, I mean, we got the FE with 225, it blows everything away. The RU with 180, and even the T-54 lightweight with 175. It has a colossally bad rate of fire, what, with 3.96 rounds a minute. It has a terrible reload in over 15 seconds. It, uh, it has the biggest caliber at 152, and it has the worst shell velocity, but it does have derp. And with a whopping 560 alpha damage, that goes a long way. That's on its uh, standard ammunition, by the way. If you stick in the, uh, the hash, that jumps up to 780 if you can get it to land. The aim time is terrible. 2.6 seconds, where everybody else is below 2 seconds. The dispersion is terrible. The, the, the gun depression and the elevation is pretty nice, 10 degrees and 20 degrees. The speed is bloody good. Not as good as the RU, but second best, 72 kilometers an hour. Its camo profile is the worst. It's absolutely terrible, 22% and 3%. But it's got derp. And that is why so many players play this tank. Now, I freely admit this isn't the best replay I'm going to show you. The idea was I played the uh, the tanks on stream. I gave each and every tank five goes, and I just picked a decent replay. And this was a decent replay. We're not setting the world on fire. I'm not showing you the amazingness of what the T-49 can do. I mean, this thing can really put down a lot of pain. It's mobile, it's quite small and compact, but it's not a forgiving tank. But then again, none of the lights are forgiving apart from, in my honest opinion, the FV301. I love that tank. And this one is fun. I mean, this is the 183, all wrapped up in a bow in the form of a light tank. And if you can play this tank and you can get on with this tank, you will just have a barrel of fun in it. I mean, 780 Dow for damage on that Hesh is just to die for. We only do 1,636. We get a third class. We killed one tank. We assisted on some others. We had a pretty nice game. And that's all you can do. But look how many credits you use because you start using the Hesh. And the Hesh is bloody expensive. 
So that is the best light in tier eight. What is the best medium? This is another one that took me by surprise. It is the T-44. That's right, the Soviet medium tank, the T-44. Now I thought it would be something along the lines of the P-44 Pantera or something like the Indian Panzer maybe, but no, it's this one. This has a 49% win rate. The Pantera has also got a 49% win rate, but this one has 49.84, the Pantera 49.75. And it goes all the way down to the very worst tank, unfortunately, the Centurion Mark 1 with a little win rate of 45%. It has a pretty decent average damage per battle. Not as good as the Pantera. This one will churn out just over 1,000, while the Pantera churns out just over 1,200. So what is it that makes this tank so good? Apart from the fact it is the most played of all the mediums in the Tetrian Tier 8 with a whopping 866 games. Compare that to the Pantera with only 591. Well, let's jump into a replay and let's have a look at it. This is another one that actually took me by surprise because on paper, this tank is not good. It has the worst DPM of all the tier eight tech tree mediums with a mere 1,435. Uh, yeah, it has the worst penetration at 175 but it has the best alpha damage at a whopping 400. I mean, that is obscene. It has a terrible rate of fire. It has a terrible reload. I mean, 16 seconds, all the rest are like between five and in eight seconds. This is 16 seconds. And it doesn't have the best shout velocity, but it does have 400 damage per shot. That is amazing. It's got a terrible aim time. It's got a terrible dispersion. And it's got pretty terrible gun depression at only five degrees. It's got terrible speed at 51 kilometers an hour. Admittedly, some of the others have only got 50, but when you look at the things like the Panther II or the TVP with, uh, with their 60 and 55 uh, kilometers an hour, you can see the difference. It has a pretty terrible camo rating. It's not the worst, 29% uh, on, on standing still, 22% while moving, and 5% after shooting. Compare that to the others are around 22%-ish. So what is it that makes this tank the best? Well, funnily enough, the thing that makes this tank stand out head and shoulders above all the others is because it has that dirt. Now, I was confused over this one because I really, really thought that this one was not going to be top. I thought the Pantera would be up there. But when you actually play it, Oh, you get to understand why it is actually up there. Because it is a mobile tank. It's pretty nice. It's quite sleek. It's quite low to the ground. It's got a nice profile. And, interestingly enough, it's got a pretty accurate gun. We, we've already dished out 1,480 damage here. We're having a good time. Admittedly, it's a tier 7, tier 8 game. But the thing is... I mean, I dusted off this T-44 and I, was, I, was, I myself was pleasantly surprised. You can see here that I'm playing it with a different gun, which is why I'm only knocking out uh, just shy of 300 damage. But I enjoy this tank. And that's why I've got a better reload, by the way. That's why I haven't got the uh, massive seconds of reload. I've only got eight seconds because of the gun that I'm using. The thing about this tank, like I said, you know, think along the lines of the T-34 series that we saw in tier 6 and tier 7 this is just you know the next one up from the t34 the t43 this is the t44 and it's equally as good it's equally as mobile we have to do it 2.5k there we take a couple of kills and it's quite a nice game and it's an interesting tank to play i'm still shocked it's number one but hey that's how it works this one is number one we get a second class for our troubles it's an enjoyable tank, I'm not going to lie. And if you haven't played this one for a while, then you should be looking at rolling out in it and giving it a bit of a bash because it will surprise you. It surprised me. So that's the light, that's the medium. What about the heavy? Well, let's be honest, there is no surprises, at least not from my side, what is the best heavy in tier 8. Yep, it's the Emil 1. That should come as no shock or surprise to most of you. I've just recently done a video on the Emil 1951, and this one features a little bit in there. But this is, on paper, according to Blitzstars, 
the best tech tree heavy currently in tier eight with a whopping 54% win rate. Better than any other tank. I mean, its closest rival is the 53 TP, which I'm gonna be doing a video on uh, later at 52%. So what is it that makes this tank so good? Well, let's jump into a replay and let's have a look. The Emil 1 is an auto loader and that sort of sets it apart from some of the rest. On paper, it's a pretty mediocre tank. It doesn't have the best penetration. It doesn't have the best DPM. It doesn't have the best alpha damage. It doesn't have the best rate of fire. It doesn't have the best reload time. It just doesn't. But it's not the worst and that's the thing. What it does have and what it has in spades is firstly, it's got pretty decent gun depression of 10 degrees and it's pretty mobile, but it's saving grace. It's biggest saving grace is that that turret is basically rock solid. The gun is pretty accurate, although don't take my word for it. That was just a terrible shot on the bat chat. And this is why I love the Emil. It's a versatile tank. Okay, it's not as fast as the 1951, the premium counterpart to this tank, but it's got the super duper speed boost. So you can get some good speed out of this. And if you can stick this tank in a good haul down position, oh, you are going to have so much fun. I mean, the reload time, because it's an auto loader, is pretty long. But you know what? It's absolutely beautiful. It is a beautiful tank to play. It's a beautiful tank to drive. And I, I actually love it. Okay, I prefer the 1951. Why? I don't know. But this, the armor on this is so much better than the 51. This turret armor is almost impenetrable. And that's really what makes it. It's a tank that really should be in your garage. I mean, I know a lot of people like grinding these things and then throwing them away. But this is one of those tanks that can really have good fun playing. Um, I did a tournament once, a tier, a tier 8 tournament, where all seven of us rolled out in a meal once and absolutely crucified the enemy. Because if you can play this tank and play it well, it is pretty much, you know, you, it, it's very difficult to counter the damn thing. Okay, you can rush it, especially if it's not hauled down, it's out of the open. You can rush it quite easily and you can hurt it. You can give it a lot of hurt. But the tank itself is more versatile than you think. And more importantly, it's incredibly noob friendly. The gun is pretty accurate. The, the output of the gun is pretty nice. I mean, the average damage is pretty good. And it is it is pretty mobile. I mean, look at this. We 400 range on the side of that GSOR. And now we're going to stick another one into him and take him down. And then we're going to turn our attentions to the tier 9. Try to hash him, but H-E him, but it's never going to work. 2,600 damage, just like that. And we, okay, we've had our paintwork scratch, but nothing major. I mean, we've still got plenty of hit points. We've still got plenty to play with. Admittedly, I screw up at the end of this when I press the wrong button um, and end up reloading, so I didn't get the last kill. But I get this kill. I mean, look at this for a shot. That's how accurate the gun is. The gun is a beaut. Um, I've got two shells loaded here. I'm going to push down onto the M6. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to pen the M6 with the penetration values that this tank has, 228. Not the best, but certainly not the worst. And, you know, the M6 is pretty difficult. And I wanted to get round him, and then I decided, oh, no, shall I, oh, I wanted premium ammunition, but then I pressed the button the wrong way. So, yeah, I completely buggered it up. Could have taken another 200 damage near his damn it, and another kill. But I'm happy with that game. I like the Emil 1. The Emil 1 is a nice tank, and it's no surprise to me that it's up there as the best. I mean, we get a second class there. We do 2.7k in damage. We take two kills. We destroyed one with assistance. It's a nice game, and that's what you can do in this thing. I mean, the average damage on this thing is pretty, pretty nice. And if you know how to use it and you enjoy playing it, you should be hitting around that 2k in this thing quite easily. So, only the TD left. And again, it's no surprise, at least not to me. So, what is it? As I said, no shock to me. It's the Sim Avente Canto Caro Mod 1964. The European line recently introduced TD. It has a whopping 53.78% win rate. Admittedly, it's got pretty low battles, only 77 Coming in a close second, however, is the ISU-152, by far the second most played TD. The first, however, is the Borsig at 1,482 battles, 
where the ISU only has 1,466. But the ISU has a win rate of 50% and the Borsig only 49. This thing, however, has the best damage per battle of all the TDs at 1,600. The ISU is coming in at 1,400, the Borsig at 1,370. So what is it that makes this tank? Is it because not many people are playing it? Or is it something else? Well, let's jump into one of those replays and let's find out. On paper, this one doesn't have the best DPM. That belongs to the AT-15A and even, funnily enough, the ISU-152. But at 3,140, it's pretty darn decent. It doesn't have the best penetration, only 225. Has pretty decent alpha damage, but not the best. I mean, that belongs to the ball, so it's 600. But 410 alpha damage is pretty nice. Now, here's the tricky part. Comes with two guns. Comes with a three-shot auto-reloader, which I would advise that you do not mount, and a single shot, which is what I'm using here. Now, with the single shot, the rate of fire is 7.66 rounds a minute with a reload time of, sh of just shy of eight seconds. Now, that is one of the best reloads. Okay, the AT-15 has a better reload of three seconds, but this one is pretty, pretty cool. It has pretty decent shout velocity. It's not the best. It has pretty decent aim time. Again, not the best, 2.26, but by far not the worst doesn't have the worst dispersion it is on paper mediocre but it has stonkingly massive frontal armor 255 is the turret armor on this thing frontally 220 is the hull now that is absolutely obscene it is by far the most heavily armored tech tank td in tier 8 and with the gun that this thing has with the damage this thing can output i am not surprised this thing is churning out the damage that it is churning out and the win rate that it has because it is pretty pretty much a, the strongest tank you can get in the tier but only with that single shot gun you put that double that triple shot in you know that auto reloading the auto loader you are going to struggle guys because it is a long wait time for those shells to load whereas the single shot just makes this tank well, obscene to be honest with you uh, okay i'm not setting the world on fire here but that poor old tiger can't front pen me frontally and i just dosh dished out 2500 damage in less than three and a half minutes that's what this tank can do it is one of those type of tanks so if you've not ground, grinded your way to this tank yet, or you haven't got this tank in your garage yet, then guys, you're missing out. And if you're rolling out with that three shot, you really are missing out because the one shot is super duper fantastic. So as you see there, we do top damage, 2,500. We only get a second class because you need to do a little bit more than that. You have to be a bit more active, but it's a fantastic tank. And no surprises for me, like I said, why this one is top in tier eight. Okay, so that is the best Tech Tree tanks in Tier 8. The T-49, the T-44, the Emil one, and the Semavente Contra Mod 1964. I've been Fujit. By all means, comment in everything below. Tell me your thoughts. Do you agree with those? Do you agree with Blitzstars? This isn't my choice, by the way. This is as per Blitzstars. Let me know in the comments. And until the next time, guys, I hope to see more of you rolling out in those tanks. But stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking because at the end of the day, that really is what it's all about, having fun and being happy.